What the fuck is up? It's the Smoke Entire Podcast. We are, Woo! Woo! We are on the road, and this is going to be, we're going to share the show. I think we are, We're yeah. going to share this show. I like that, because then uh, I don't have to work today. No, this because we're both at work together. Why should Another we Another day, to... Opie doesn't have to work. <laughs> and then we got Chef Carl Ruiz. We got Greg Opie Hughes. Turning off the phone. Phone you, off. Matt. Thank you, sir. This is a pleasure. We're at La Cubana, Carl's new restaurant. Where Carl has been since I saw him twelve hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we have the same stories with this guy? No, I, I came in for a rare day in uh, New York City because in the summer I, I I just chill out at the beach and fish and and send Carl. You got a big one the other day. Uh, yeah, you were on a boat and got a fat. One. Oh, the fish. Yes, yeah, the fat. Yes, oh no, yes. <laughs> no. And then Carl, the Carl. That's Carl in the restaurant. No, but oh, I came man. in to do a podcast with Carl. I go, I got a rare day. I'll be in New York City. I came to La Cubana, just like you said, but yeah. I found him passed out in booth, <laughs> booth 78. 78. I was in oh, 76. Oh, you've learned the table. You've learned the no, table. No, this is 76. Number. We're in 76 now. Yeah. Oh. You told me to set up in 76. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in 78. 78 passed out, and they were checking his pulse. I'm like, oh, that's good. Paul's <laughs> ready to podcast. That's a restaurant tour. Oh, that's how I found him today. Yeah, that's I, what I'm saying. That's I what I brought in, it up. Uh, I, I don't remember his name, but dude over there in the white shirt. I was like, hey, I'm Matt. Is, uh, is Carl around? He's like, oh, I'll look for him. I was like, oh, if he's busy, don't worry about all the yeah. He goes... We have different definitions of busy. And he leads me, <laughs> he leads me over here. And Carl's asleep on the couch. Oh, and he's like, man. hey, buddy. We- hey, buddy. Your friend Matt's here. <laughs> and what does it say about us, Matt, that we both love this guy? Oh, oh my God. God. It we was- have, me and you had the issues, not him. Oh, my God. It was so funny. So, strangers in the room on my podcast, Greg uh, Opie Hughes. We're just going gonna to drop the Greg. But uh, well, half of the Opie and Anthony program for 20 20- plus years we made it to about 20 20 yeah and then the op radio show and now the op radio podcast yes, yes. you and um your former radio hosts yeah. are the reason i started doing this podcast damn it another and, guy that's no, more successful than me and got uh, so many I think inspiration <laughs> from, so from, from, many. from the op radio go back you want to talk about your summer home you're doing all right but you guys you guys were the first on your your early years of satellite radio yeah you guys um you know with jimmy as well were, were the first people that i ever really heard talk like like we t- like like Howard had his like overtly sexual and right. pushing the list the limits of that. Whereas you guys sort of had the comics on and talked like the green room behind the comedy store. Can I add to that, please? Because a lot of people, you know, um, when you do Shock Jock or Edgy Radio, you know, Howard has to say they're ripping me off, Robin. Right. Here's the difference. So when I, I wasn't really a big Howard Surf fan, but I listened to him, you know, uh, here and there when I could. So because I wanted to learn from the business, he was still a broadcaster. Through all that, uh-huh. and me and Anthony came up with a style where you know I have a lot of radio experience, been doing this a long time. You mean time. a broadcaster in terms of like a format that they were following yes. and, and uh, his voice yeah, and everything yeah. was you know I'm a big fan. Classical Polish. radio, yeah. big fan, Howard, big fan. And, and uh, <laughs> you added a lot there. Carl. No, you guys. <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> Almost everyone like him. It's the best. Yeah, I do. I'm terrified. I'm terrified. How terrified he is. He's got a. He's got this crazy multi-million dollar restaurant in New York City, so he wants everyone to like him. Big fan, Howard Robin. Super good. (laughs) Yeah. So, but um, we developed a style where it's like, man, you know, like this. We're just hanging out. So why can't we just hang out, talk, and put it on the radio? Why does it have to be overly polished? Even Rogan credits you guys for inspiring. Another guy that's more successful than me, but got the inspiration from the OP. Yeah. No, well, I mean, you know, he grinds it out. He does. He does put in the work. Those yeah. three, I, I've done Rogan. Those shows are marathons. I did. Rogan has special chairs. Have you seen his special chairs? No, I haven't he been has there in a while. Special podcasting chairs, really? in his studio. Yeah. that sort of look. They look like desk chairs, but they have. Um, the seat is almost like one of those like old geriatric bike seats. Nice. Where it's actually like a big fat ass bike seat, right? That and with a with a back support that like you can sit in for three hours yeah. without like shifting yeah, around yeah, a yeah. bunch. It was really neat. 
<laughs> I haven't uh, been there in a couple of years. But well, he's got the new place. Yeah, I've been the, in the new place. You got the now it's like man cave is like right. man Costco what? over there. <laughs> like he bought like a, he bought like an empty Walmart. Yeah, yeah. And he's got like an indoor archery range, which like, is cool, which is crazy. Yeah. And he you know he parks those cars awesome. over there. And a, big and a, fan, those, Joe Rogan, big fan. And one of those float tanks. He's got a float tank. I floated recently. Did you like it? I loved it. Uh, How? What was the tank like? Because, like, I did it at a resort, and it was really kind of like a room with a dark hot tub in it, not like a capsule so much. Mine was, like, uh, a decent-sized walk-in closet. Mm -hmm. So it was about um, eight feet long and maybe six feet across. And were you able to, like, go to space mentally? Yes. I was for a bit, but I I did it as sort of this romantic thing with Hannah. Yeah. So we were both in one pool together. Really? So you'd occasionally bump into each other and kind of be taken out of that mental I'm in space thing. I I was going to tell this story on my podcast. Well, this is your podcast. It is our podcast. We're sharing this podcast. (laughs) So it was interesting to say romantic. Mm. So, yeah, I went to space big time. And, And you notice, like, you couldn't push your body down. Yeah, it, wasn't well, that crazy? With well, because the salt, they, yeah. they really crank up the salt in the water. And I, they and could I, cook pasta in that. And I, I'm a good meditator, and I'm good at like just silencing the voices in my head. And so I'm in there, right? Oh man, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Say it. All right. So speaking of being romantic, like, uh-huh. so I'm about an hour in, and I start getting a funny feeling. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. god. <laughs> and I'm like. Wow, this is kind of erotic, then, right? <laughs> this is what I love about that podcast. Your, your ultimate sexual fantasy is being in space alone. <laughs> you yeah, actually I'm felt like a that. human. Now I'm starting to think like, well, we fall in the water constantly. I, I got, I'm like, wow, I got a boner in space right now. Yeah, there you go. So I, I had a boner, and I'm like, I still got 20 minutes left. What the oh, hell? Oh, Jesus. Is no. I go, going. what the hell? Did right? you? Oh. And because I think it's you rubbed it out. Yes, good for you. But good for you. Here's the best part. So, I'm thinking because you know we're floating, and it's really we. It was me. We. Uh, well, it was, there was, it no, was we afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> me and um, a couple million. Opie talks to Richie. <laughs> Rich Opie. <laughs> so, hey, Rich Opie, what are we doing? We're jerking off. So I'm floating. <laughs> it feels like you're in space after a while. It's pitch dark. You can't see the hand in front of you, and you got the. the earplugs in so you can't hear any earplugs going on so you really take out all the senses yeah and now i'm feeling like i got a boner in space right now man so i think you just sold me on it so i decided to rub it out but now i'm thinking ah it's dark so you know i I would assume the remnants just go away oh yeah they they go out into space (laughs) nope What happened when they turned the lights so on? So you have a little, you have happy mayo just fucking swimming what, around you? When I turned the light on. You got happy mayo swimming around you? When I turned the light on, no. I, I went into a complete panic because there was, <laughs> because there was egg drop soup everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, I hope he was going to stretch you and tell us. You're an egg drop soup oh, every, like everywhere. Oh my God. I guess it's not you tell us. I guess it was. Does the salt water break it down? <laughs> No. But I'm thinking it so preserves it. It's like a hundred year old yolk. I'm thinking it's so dark, and with the salt and the darkness, oh this, you created this will a go petri away dish. on its own, right? No, I panicked, and I'm like, it took me right out of my experience as I'm scooping up egg Oh my soup. god! Uh, so you definitely you handled it. I had to. I couldn't just like leave and, and oh leave that god. mess for the people that were kind enough oh, to have me. Oh my god! I remember when I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> there was a place. There was a place called Dollar Video, and it was like the it was a video store, and they had a little porn section with a curtain. So, I decided that I was going to go and check out the porn section. And I was a kid, and I see all the the, the porn covers of all the videos. Right. Of, which section did it go in? Which I got. I got very excited. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I gave myself a sidewinder, right? So I'm giving myself a sidewinder. I have never heard that term before, but I immediately That's know a, what you're talking about. You know exactly. About. <laughs> if you're a guy, you know what a sidewinder is, right? Wait, as you're, as you're standing as, there? I'm sitting, I'm standing inside this little curtained area right. of the video store. Right. Just looking at the... Are the, you in a peep booth or just in the aisles? Looking no, at, no, no, no. The, the aisle was cordoned off. Right, okay. And I gotcha. went inside and I saw all the yeah, yeah. boxes and I was immediately aroused. I'm Cuban. I was ready to go. Right? 
ready to make fucking 19 kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I give myself a, I'm starting to give myself a side mind, and I thought it was all cool. Yeah. Then I got out. I got the Transformer. And then I came out, and I go pick up the Transformers uh, movie box, yeah, which yeah. is what I wanted. Like, back then, it was a cartoon yeah, Transformers yeah. movie. And I come up to the counter, and there's a girl. She's, like, 19 years old. And as that's, I'm... That's cruel and unusual punishment to have, let a 19-year-old girl work with, you know... You as know, as I'm handing her the video place. that I want to rent, she looks at me, and I look up, and there's a short-circuit TV that had a camera. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know what you were the, Where the porn section was, she watched me sidewind myself. No way. And I give her this, and she goes... You're fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to go, yup. Yes. Bad day. Uh, <laughs> this is a bad day. Yeah. Oh, that's brutal. That was a real life, real life story. Wow. So, radio. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Can I talk about um, my fish? The did fish you, you caught? Did you day? mention it? You yeah. caught a giant, was it straight bass? Straight bass. We probably, we didn't measure it, but probably like 42 inches. Um, that's a huge straight bass. Yeah. And I, you didn't I only, measure it? You sound like fucking... Bring that. Well, you want I didn't measure it, but it's forty-two point six. Oh, yeah. If you're a fisherman, you, you want to be able to right? tell people. Oh, that so that you was throw the biggest one ever. Got yeah, it. yeah. So uh, people got mad at me because I, I gave away the spot. Do you deal with shit like this? Giving okay. So yes and no. Because you fish a little bit, right? I, I don't fish. I drive cars on beautiful roads in the middle of nowhere. Oh, and you're giving away and spots. I, and I came, and I, for a long time, this for a I long time, I had when I when I made my videos, I would actually put the location. Because I thought for some very stupid reason that a global audience might gain some use from that. Right. After a while, I started to get very angry emails from locals who were saying, quit putting fucking titles of the roads in, in the video, oh, wow. you asshole. And, and I said, you know what? <laughs> you guys are completely right. And I stopped doing it. So now if people ask me... yeah. Where, what road? I'll I'll tell them. Yeah, but I don't I don't advertise it. See, that's why I brought it up. So, did you literally tag the Instagram picture with the exact? No, spot? no, no, no. But so, when you see my fishing pictures, which Carl hates, and my wife at this point, dude, he sends <laughs> his wife see. pictures. I'm like, your wife is <laughs> young and not hot. Give a shit. <laughs> I was going through his phone once. And I'm like, are you sending your hot fucking wife <laughs> pictures of your stupid fish? And he's so, like, he's like. Does she text me back? Of wow, big one. I'm like, she just, she's exhausted yeah. by you. She just, yeah. wants, she she just, just wants, wants to be chill. chill. Yeah. Yeah. She, you need to follow fish She's at the house on the beach and you're like, look! And you're literally 10 <laughs> feet from her. Last time, Wait, last, time I'm gonna, last time I'm going to bitch uh, about somebody if I'm fishing. Oh. Can you identify the spot in the picture? No, so why? here's the deal. So when I when I take uh, my pictures, I'm you know, I'm a surf caster. Yeah, yeah. I don't show the houses because it gives away spots. Right. So I sort of know that. So, but I was excited about that fish, and if you notice, most people that take take pictures of their fish from a boat, they're always facing out out because they the don't want to show where the it's spot a real is. thing. Yeah, I I made a rookie mistake, and people start bitching like, "Oh, come on, man! You just gave away the spot. I know exactly right. where that is. Right, and if right, I right. knew, other people know, man, and that is a good spot right. to strike bass. Right. So, well, there's the thing about social media in general, and not just fishing. It's like people can use it for good, or they can use it to be assholes. Right. right? So. If I give, if I tell people the name of a road, even if anyone who is two points above complete mongoloid can yeah. find that road, yeah, yeah, it's not hard to find the road. It's right. like look for the squiggly things. You know right. what I mean? It's not hard. Fishing is different because I guess there's a limited amount of fish and I don't whatever. Know. I mean, I don't know. Same, I mean, I you would... know what happens in LA where it has the surf spots yeah, yeah. too. The surf people don't want to give away the surf spots. Right. They don't want to crowd those with the with the roads. They don't want. I think it's less of a problem with the roads because, like, I think it's just no, that people like to bitch about anything. Because in the end, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. I don't think it matters. Right. No. I made out with a girl that follows me on Twitter. Yes. Yeah, Congratulations. Bad. That's never happened and to me. What she look like? Not like her profile. <laughs> <laughs> so we both Carl. are wailing. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, how are, how are you feeling at this very moment right now? Uh, I am so hungover. I, I... 
I'm a fan of Matt. I'm a fan of Opie. I'm not a fan of Matt and Opie because Together. both are right. professional broadcasters, and I'm completely lost in this. And we're thing. sitting in the corner of a restaurant on a Yeti microphone right now. Yeah. I think the professional broadcaster has gone out the window. With Matty's hairpiece with a with I a love you. I love you both. I love you both. Last time I saw Matt, and then Matt came to the restaurant, I said yeah. it really made me happy. You know what I love about Matt? Matt's honest. He's an honest human being. Yeah, and that's I hard that's to find. Yeah. I brought him one of the dishes that I love to do here is like a fried lamb. So he's there with his wife, who tolerates me. Anna <laughs> lo- loves Carl. Don't I love her? Don't I mean, let him say that. Anna does love. Carl. I went to the wedding. Matt had the best wedding I've ever been to. Where during the re- during the ceremony. There was buckets of Coronas on each aisle. That's so actually could, a Hannah nice. family tradition. That's so you can drink tradition. Coronas while they got married. I Hannah was, sent me the one of the nicest. Carl sent me a text message a couple like days ago. Yeah. The wedding was two months ago. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, I, I think it was probably one thirty in the morning New York time. Yeah. And he goes, I was just sitting at the bar thinking about your wedding. I plan events for a living, yeah. and that was one of the best events yeah. I've ever been to. It was such a I, nice compliment. I would have to have to take your word for it because if I remember correctly. Directly, the last time we podcasted, someone was hinting at bringing me as his guest I so I it, could enjoy Matt Farris. I would wedding. have been happy to have oh, you, but I thought it was then, weird to invite you because we'd met twice. No, but I, I thought that would be weird. But I was going to go as his guest, if you fun. remember, but then he forgot. I took to, I took some girl. Who, oh, well, then that's okay. And, and we had, How's it, it worked out with Oh, her? my God. What a breakup, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, so my, my now sister in law was like, Man, that guy that guy Carl was really funny, but that girl he was with did not look happy. <laughs> no. Well, so that was the beginning of the end. Oh, that was the beginning of the breakup. So so she was a young girl and God bless her. She she doesn't understand strategy. I, I was I was living with her because I got rid of my cabin. The creepy cabin. And I said to her, I said, Listen, I'm about to open a restaurant in New York City. I need you to calm down. Right, a lot of things are going to happen. A lot of things are going to start happening. I'm going to start drinking a lot. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna, start? No, like, like the like way relatively, I am now. Oh, relative. Oh, okay. Like right now, I'm like Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Dudley Moore. <laughs> I'm Dudley Moore. You're, you're, you're like Arthur. Cuban Arthur. Cuban Arthur. Arturo. Arturo. <laughs> so there was one night. It was the day before the opening of the restaurant, and it's eleven o'clock. And it started raining outside crazy. And I texted her. I said, I'm not coming home because I don't want to be on a train for an hour. It's raining a lot. She says, if you don't come home, don't come home ever. I said, wow. It's not a good threat for Carl because not he a is good perfectly threat. happy sleeping on this couch for a month and a half. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, in a, he was home. In a $3.5 million build out. <laughs> they just put in the couches yeah. and they're teal. <laughs> and I'm cute and I go, okay. And that was that? So three days later, she's like, "That's a rookie move, man." Rookie, right? she I was just a rookie. She just, I mean, you gotta just, know, Carl. Carl, you're not gonna, you're not gonna take that. Bill no. Boggs, she right. Bill Boggs it. It was just a mess. And then, and, <laughs> <laughs> and then she like, was Munson out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and then she's like, "Are you seeing someone?" I'm like, eleven. <laughs> oh man, I'm on Fifteenth Street in Manhattan. Like, what are you gonna do? How many of these boots have you had sex in? Uh, four. <laughs> <laughs> Including this one. Four.